Hey everybody and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host J.A. Curtis, but you guys can call me Alex. And today's video is all about, um, we're continuing on our series learning about the changes to Fit Laravel 5.3, okay? So I'm sure a lot of you guys have been, you've been using Fit Laravel 5.2 for a while. Maybe you've been following this series and, or sorry, the series we did earlier, which was on Laravel 5.2. And now that Laravel 5.3 is imminent, it's coming out any day now. Um, like maybe tomorrow, honestly. And um, anyway, I want to show you those changes. So the first video, if you missed that one, you're going to want to go back and watch that massive video. It was really long, but it went over tons of tons of all the small features. And then every video after that is going to be like this one. This one should be pretty short. There's not a ton to show because I'm going to break them into like little um, chunks. Okay. So this video is all about the directory file changes. What has changed in the file structure between Laravel 5.2 and 5.3. So let me just go ahead and show you. So you'll notice this is, a, I've got here a Laravel 5.2 project. I just booted this up five seconds ago before the video started. And this is what you guys are used to seeing, right? This is the file structure we're used to. And then over here, I've gone ahead and also booted up a Laravel 5.3. And you'll see it looks almost the same, right? It looks very, very similar. There's a couple things that are, um, You'll notice this is a little bit longer because there's a few things that have been added, but um, it's actually really not that big of a change. It doesn't break anything or anything like that. So right here from the get-go at the top level, you'll notice we now have a node modules, okay? So um, you mentioned we mentioned this in the last video. We talked about how um, we now have a composer .j or sorry, not composer, uh, a package.json file, and this automatically loads things like view and gulp and bootstrap and stuff like that jquery all that stuff and that's pulled in you can pull that in through npm okay so that's what you might be familiar with well npm is node modules pack uh, node package manager i guess and um so it create just how um composer creates things like composer.json and stuff like that um node will put stuff into node or npm put stuff into node modules and you'll see here we have all of those same files the bootstrap sass the gulp um, uh, everything here, so jQuery view, all that stuff that we just saw in here, Look, take a look over here at this folder, you'll see that this matches exactly to this folder here, this node modules folder. So you'll see this node modules folder and you'll wonder what it is. Well, what it is, it just brings in all of your packages, these are generally JavaScript packages, um, in through and for npm through this package.json file. Okay, so you'll notice this change here. Again, it doesn't break if you it won't break anything if you're upgrading from 5.2 to 5.3. But if you boot up a new 5.3 install, you're gonna notice this node modules and wonder what it is. And that's exactly what it is. Okay, so it's pulling stuff in from that package.json. And if you wanted to add more, you could easily add more and then do npm update or npm install and then um, it'll pull these into node modules, okay? So that's what we got there for node modules. I'm trying to think what else stands out. Everything else is gonna look very much the same until, whoop, till we get here. Now you'll see, wait, we have a routes folder? We have a routes folder in the base of our Laravel 5.3, that's right. Routes have now been pulled into the base of 5.3. They're no longer up in the app folder. They've been moved out of there and now they've got their own place in here. The next video is gonna focus all on routes. So I'm gonna skip over routes for now and go ahead and skip to the next video if you wanna learn more about how routes have changed and stuff like that, we'll talk about it there, okay? So otherwise, everything's basically the same um, as far as the top level directory. I think all of these are gonna be basically the same of what you guys are familiar with. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't see anything that pops out as you know unique. Um, okay, if we dive into some folders now, we'll notice a few changes inside the folders. So um, we've got here inside of our app folder, you'll notice that it's not very big. Let's just move over to 5.2 uh, real quick. Let me close this. And we look at our app folder here and there's a ton of folders, right? Tons of folders. And we know it's not the routes folder that's missing because the routes folders in HTTP and then routes.php, right? So we know it's not that's missing. Um, it's all these other folders. Where have they gone? Where have they been moved to? Well, they actually really haven't been moved. They do still exist inside the app folder. Um, there, This debate came up actually quite a while ago um, on Twitter uh, Taylor Otwell was asking what we should do with, first of all, the routes file, but what about all these extra files? Does it confuse people? Um, if you think about it as like a newcomer, when you boot up a 5.2, you open up your routes folder, you have all these folders. It's like, what does this do? You've got events and exceptions and jobs and listeners and policies. 
and all this kind of stuff and it just seems that it can be a little overwhelming for beginners so sorry I'm clicking around a lot but if we go into actually some of these folders um, we go into events he actually does have I guess a default event that has it's just an empty event just basically to take up space so this isn't an empty folder. Um, and then inside of, we're in level 5.2 right now. So inside of policies, you'll see, oh, there's not even a policy here. Um, providers obviously have stuff in it. Same with listers, there's not even a listener in here. It's an empty folder. And then job, he has an empty job again. So there, the, a lot of these folders were basically just empty from the get-go. So they were just kind of just taking up space. And now what you'll see is those are the folders that are missing, okay? So every folder inside the app folder is stuff that actually has something in it, okay? So there's no empty, just random folders um, inside of here. The HTTP folder obviously has some stuff. Um, and then your providers. So it's kept it really clean and lean. We just have the core essentials inside of here, these main four folders that you actually need for every project. And the other ones that you might need for some projects, but not all projects, have been taken out. Now your question is basically like, okay, so wait, what happens when I need those things? Are they, you know, the features are not gone. You still actually store them inside this app folder. The difference is those folders are generated when you use the artisan command. So let's head on over, oops, let's head on over to our terminal. And um, inside our terminal, let me pull up a better terminal for you. Um, inside of our terminal, let's CD into this project. And um, inside this terminal here, if we run a command like php artisan make, let's make a um, uh, an event, okay? So we'll call it um, uh, user signed up, kind of a basic event. Okay, so we click enter. It says event created successfully. And you saw over here now that we now have an events folder created right away. We have a user signed up event created and we can go ahead and create that event. Now, let's say we needed a, a listener to go with that event. We can go do the same thing. We can go PHP artisan make listener and um, user, or we'll say like send welcome email. Oh, I spelled listener wrong. Okay, let's listen. And then it's been a while since I made a listener. So we actually need to then bind it, I think, to an event. So we do event equals user signed up. Is that what I spelled? I think that's what I called it. There we go. I did it right. Okay. So there we go. Um, quickly, little <laughs> tutorial on how to make listeners. Um, okay. So we made a listeners folder for us. We have send welcome email. It's created here. It's, it's binded to the user signed up event. So you can see here that as you need things, if you want to create a job, obviously you just do the artisan command for making a job, it'll create a jobs folder and stuff like that, okay? So all these folders get created on an as to need basis, okay? So that's kind of helps clean up a lot of this stuff inside of here because you really don't need a lot of that stuff that used to be in there, and so they've really made it easier for you, okay? Um, moving on down into this folder, we can see inside the HTTP folder, obviously there's no routes. Uh, there's no routes.php folder anymore. That was moved into our... Um, into its own routes file, okay? And if we take a look here, what, I'm trying to think what else was in this folder, actually. It just seemed like it was longer. Um, we did have the request, so this, again, is something you can just generate on an as to need basis, okay? So now, you can see here, inside of this folder, we have our app, we've got our HTTP, it's really clean and simple. We just have our controllers and our middleware, and then obviously your kernel, which we'll talk about when we go, get into routes. But um, that's everything inside of this folder, okay? So that's the app folder. Everything else has basically said, stayed the same. One last thing that you will notice is that's changed is if you go to um, under resources, we now have an assets folder that has our JavaScript and our SAS. So this allows you to store your SAS uh, files in here. And then obviously you'll use go slash elixir to move them into the public folder, into public CSS. You'll obviously use um, you know that to generate them up into there. And then inside of our job, we have now have a JavaScript folder, which I don't think we had before, that now has an app.js and a bootstrap.js. So the bootstrap.js now pulls in 
these this jQuery and Vue and Lodash. It pulls all of those in. It also adds an, uh, you know CSRF tokens to all of our Vue um, AJAX requests. So all that happens in Bootstrap, and then a, a, app. Oh my gosh, app.js is now pulled in. Um, that's generated over here as an actual JS file, and it looks like it's minified. But um, now when you have your project, your project's going to basically inherit app.js, which then requires the bootstrap. Okay, So if you need to add something, you can add it to bootstrap. And then also the app.js configures a view file, which we'll talk more about what this is and what it means later. Okay, so those are basically the changes to the file structure. Everything else should stay basically the same, but that's what we've gotten as we've upgraded from 5.2 to 5.3. Um, they're all good changes. None of them will break your code. It's nothing like moving from Laravel 4 to Laravel 5. They're all just nice, clean changes. I'm really happy with all the changes. I think it's all for the better, and it was a really, really good change. Cleaning up this apps folder, I think, was really, really good. Moving routes down to the base was something I was a big fan of. I'm really glad they ended up doing that. And um, having node modules in here and stuff, I think, is all really great as well. So um, anyway, I think it's a great change. Just want to show you guys what that is. The next video, we're going to be diving into the routes file and talk more about what, or the routes folder now, and talk about what changes have come to the routes folder.